Okay, here we go. That way I don't have to record at home. I learned? Okay, shut up, Tomo. All right. Okay, so we're, we're looking at our solving systems of equations. Okay, we're solving systems of equations. Now, what does it mean for a system of equations? You have to have two or more equations. So you can't have a system that's only one equation, okay? You have to have two or more equations. And at the beginning, we're only dealing with lines. We're only going to have lines for these equations, okay? Uh, today, we're only doing the four problems on the front. Tomorrow, we're going to do the uh, four problems on the back, okay? All right. So we're doing two or more equations. Now, a solution, well, let's look at the first one. What can you say about these two lines in this diagram? They're parallel. They're parallel, okay. So if they're parallel, Pazinski, focus on your work. All right. If they're parallel, they have no solution, okay. We're going to talk about what it means to have a solution in a second. So if they're parallel, they don't intersect, they have no solution. And in this one, the intersection is the solution. The intersection is the solution. You okay? All right. All right. Okay. All right. So when two lines intersect, or a line and a curve intersect, that is the solution to the system. So that's why it's easy to talk about two equations. When we start doing three equations, that means they all three have to meet at the same point. And that's actually kind of rare. But two, two equations or two lines meeting that intersection, that's pretty common. Okay? So if you have intersecting lines, there is one solution. Can two lines intersect more than once? Or I'm sorry, can two lines intersect twice? No. 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 Okay, two lines cannot intersect twice. Yes? So what's the answer? Okay. Oh, whatever the coordinates are. Okay, so this one is like 1.1 1 .1 and 2.2. Does it have to be exact? It can be roughly. Uh, for this example, it's roughly, but when you do the problems, it'll be exact because there'll be nice integers, okay? All right, so I'm going to do the examples, and you'll see how, how we're going to do the solutions. But look at this third example. And then it says infinite number of solutions. How many lines is one. Here's the weird part. Pazinski, focus. Your work. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so let's say I have this equation. 2x plus 2y equals 4. And I have this equation. x plus y equals 2. Can you guys see that they're the same equation? No. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. One, the top equation is the bottom equation multiplied by 2. So the top one is a multiple of the bottom one. So even though, so technically they look different, but they're the same. And that's how you're going to get infinite number of solutions, where I give you equations that look different, but they produce the same line. Okay, and we're going to have infinite number of solutions. Because they're the same line, they intersect everywhere. Okay, now that is different from all real numbers. Infinite number of solutions and all real numbers are different, right? Because a solution here, this is a solution 2 comma 3, but what 2 comma 1 doesn't work. All real numbers means it doesn't matter what the number is. Infinitely many solutions just means there's an infinite number of solutions, but it does matter what the numbers are. So here's an example of a solution 2, 3, because it's on this line. But uh, 2, 1 is not a solution. Right? 2, 1 is not on that line, so 2, 1 is not a solution. About four five. Four five? Four five is up here, right? No, no, uh, four four. Four four, yeah. Four four is a solution, yes. So it doesn't matter which one Well, no, no, no. The answer is infinite number of solutions. The answer is infinite number of solutions. You're not going to put any numbers when it's an infinite number of solutions. You're just going to put infinite number of solutions. And we'll do an example of that, and you'll see what to put, okay? All right, let's go on to example 1A. 1A. So just graph both of them. And you want to plot as many dots as you can. So here you have a uh, y-intercept of negative 1. And you have a slope of negative 2, so you go down 2, right 3. 
down two, right three, and you have those dots. And you want to go backwards from that. So you want to go up two, left three. All right, and then just go through those dots. We're going to repeat the process with the second equation. We have a y-intercept at 3. We're going to go up 2, right 3, and go backwards. We're going to go down 2 and left 3. Now look what we have here. We have an overlapping point. So I'm going to darken that very big, okay? Because that's going to be our intersection. So that intersection is our solution. What's the coordinates of that intersection? Negative 3, positive 1. Negative 3, positive 1. So the answer is negative 3, 1. That's the answer I'm looking for. So the answer is negative 3, 1. The work to get that answer is this graph. Yes, sir? Do you mean the graph? Like, if you, I don't know, if there's some situation where you just, like, know it. And you just know it? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you need to write down the graph. Or do you All right, so technically, yes. If I ask you to show your work, you've got to show the graph. Okay. But, you know, sometimes I don't pay attention. <laughs> uh, so he here's, here's how I'll answer your question. Let's say you knew the x was negative 3, but for some reason, you put a 0 there. You have no work. You've lost all the points. Okay? So if you have the correct answer, and I believe that you got it on your own, then you'll get the correct problem. Sweet. All right. But if I think you photo mapped it, then you're not getting it. All right. So, okay, first thing I want to do here, this is not in this little bit of form, so I want to go ahead and solve it for slope in step form. So subtract x from both sides, making it negative x minus 4, divide by negative 2. So that's y equals 1 half x plus 2. Why'd you get negative x? Okay, when I move the x from the left side to the right side, it changes signs. Uh. Okay, and then I divide by negative 2. Right, so negative 1 over negative 2, I rewrite that as 1 half. Negative 4 divided by negative 2 is, I got a plus 2. All right, so let's graph both of them. Oh, look, they're the same equation. Infinite. All right, so what? So let's go ahead and plot it. So this is one of those that uh, you know what the answer is, right? Somebody already shouted the answer. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> Just kidding. All right, so so what? So. This is the infinitely many. You can just write infinitely many. All right, first period, argue with me. Can we just write infinite? Yeah, you can do that. You oh, you were part of it. Yeah, where's the LY? Infinite. The LY was a joke. Oh. Somebody asked a question over there? Okay. Right, so they're the same equation. So quite possibly, uh, this is one of those, like uh, Lincoln was asking, do I have to graph this if I know the answer is infinitely many? Yeah, this one's probably okay, just write infinitely many. Okay. All right, C. All right, both of these are what's called standard form. I'm gonna solve these for slope intercept form. So 2y equals negative 3x plus two, right? I move the 3x from the left to the right, that becomes negative. Divide by 2. So y equals negative 3 halves x plus 1. Let's go ahead and graph that one. We have a y-intercept of 1. Right, the y-intercept is 1. We have a down 3, right 2. Down 3, right 2. And go backwards, you go up 3, left 2. Right. Make sure your dots are nice and big, not just because we're going to use those dots. 
the way these equations were chosen, if there is a solution, it's going to be at one of these dots. Okay. Just to keep things easy. Solve the other one for y. So it's negative y equals negative x plus 4. All I did was move the x to the right, making it negative x. That minus sign on the y stays with the y. Divide by negative 1. And again, y equals 1x, so just x minus 4. So I have a y-intercept of negative 4. And slope of 1, right, that's 1. That's 1 over 1. So you go up 1, right 1, up 1, right 1, and there it is. And there's my solution. What's the coordinates of that? 2, negative 2. So that's the answer. So make sure, one of the things people forget when they finish a graphic is they forget to answer the question. So make sure you answer the question, or I'm going to assume you don't know how to answer the question. So what's the answer solution? Yes. Answer. Huh? What? The solution? Yes. Is that, a, is that the answer? Yes. Right. right. This one has a solution of 2 and negative 2. That's the, That's the answer. Which is the solution? Oh. Solution and answer means the same thing, right? Okay. I don't know, but up here it says solution. Which one, the middle one or the left one? If you know, you know. If you don't know, it's not good. The more you know. All right, D. All right, let's solve this for y. So 6y equals negative 4x plus 12. Divide by 6. You get y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 2. I reduce the fraction 4 6 to 2 thirds. So I'm starting with a y-intercept of 2. And then I have a slope of negative 2 thirds. So I go down 2, right 3. Down 2, right 3. And then I go backwards, up 2, left 3. Up 2, left. Draw my line. All right, let's do the other one. That one's already solved. Ooh, negative 4. Parallel. Parallel. So what's the solution? No solution. No solution. No solution. That is the end of the lesson. Uh, you may work on the 10 problems I gave you for homework, for classwork. And I'll help you individually.